grade 8 math number 8.2b. This chapter is about systems of linear equations. And in the last video, we talked about solving with the substitution method. Now we're going to talk about how to choose that first equation for the substitution method. We use substitution to solve for linear equations. You solve for one variable in one of the equations, and we substitute that value for the variable in the other equation. We substitute the answer into either original equation to find the value of the other one, the other variable. So, what we're doing is we're turning two equations with two variables into one equation with one variable. So look at this equation and this equation, okay? This is one equation, and this is the second equation, all right? We can see that this one already has a y equal to something. So, that's the first one to choose because we already know what y is. It's 2 plus 3. So, we're going to plug this 2 plus 3 into this equation where the y is. See? That's a 5. So we have 2 times 5, so that's 4x plus 10. See? 2 times 5 is 10. We subtract 10 from each side, and we see that 4x equals 16 and that x equals 4. So by substituting this 2 plus 3 for the y, because it says that's what y equals to, by substituting that into this equation for where the y is, we were able to, to find out what x is. Now we can go back and plug this x equals 4 into this one to see what this is, see? And to see if we got it right. That's all substitution is, all right? But how do you know which equation to choose first? I mean, for that one it made sense because it said y equals. Well, so does this one. We used this system of equations, these two equations, in our last video. And I chose this one first because it already told me that y equaled 3x plus 1. Well, what would have happened if we didn't choose it first? It was smarter that we did, but what if we tried to solve for x first? You know what? If we had used this one and we had subtracted y from each side and created a zero pair right here, we would have had negative 3x equals negative y plus 1, and we would have had to divide each of these terms by 3 to isolate to get find out what that x's value is. See? You know what would have happened? We would have gotten a bunch of fractions. So by choosing this one, it was smart to choose it first because not only was it telling us that y was equal to this, but if we had gone with this one and tried to solve it for x, eh, we would have gotten a bunch of fractions. So this is easier. By substituting this 3x plus 1 right here for y from the second equation, we avoided those silly fractions. And we got negative 3x plus 3x. Well, that's a zero pair, isn't it? Negative 3x plus 3x. So that canceled itself out, and all we were left with is 1 equals 1. See? So, when you see that the y is by itself, just go with that one as your first equation, all right? Now look at this one. We're going to go with this one as our first equation because the x is by itself. There's no coefficient. And look, it would be so easy to just add a 2y to each side to get that x by itself. See? Because it's already alone. If we did it with this one, we'd have to divide by 3 to get rid of this coefficient. But this x is already by itself, so I choose that one first. See? All I have to do is add 2y to each side, and that x is really by itself, isn't it? And now we've got x equals the 2y plus 5. All we have to do is distributive property. 3 times a 2y is 6y, and 3 times 5 is 15. That's a plus 15. We drop down our negative 5y, and it equals 8. We make a zero pair here by subtracting 15, and 8 take away 15 is a negative 7. This 6y minus 5y right here makes a 1y. Well, then that means y is equal to negative, se negative 7. See that? Remember our friend in the invisible 1? Well, it said 1y was equal to negative 7. I just did the extra step of division to show how it was done. So we know y is equal to negative 7. We've now solved for y. Now we can go to the second equation, 3x minus 5y equals 8, and we can plug in this negative 7 for the y. All right? So 3x minus 5 
times 7 equals 8. We have a negative 5 times a negative 7. That's a positive 35. And we add, if we subtract 35 from each side of the equation, that makes a 0 pair. And 8 take away 35 is a negative 27. Now we've got 3x equals negative 27. Now, if we divide by 3 on each side and get our friend the invisible 1x, so we have an x is equal to negative 27 divided by 3. That's a negative 9. Now we've solved for x. We have y and x. Our ordered pair is, because the x is first, negative 9 comma negative 7. And that's the solution for the system of equations for these two. And it all started because that x had no coefficient. It was by itself, and it was the easiest one to start with. Okay? Now, in our next video, we're going to continue on talking about systems of equations and how to solve them. And what we're going to do is we're going to graph our solutions of our ordered pairs to check them. Okay? So that's going to be 8.2c. All right? We're making our way through this. I'll see you next video. Keep trying. Bye.